Kyle, you know what I hate about this car? Um, well, you think it's ugly. That's that's one of them. <laughs> okay, you don't like that it doesn't have one pedal driving. That's another one. You don't like that you can't set state of charge limit. Yeah, that's crazy. And you really don't like that it doesn't have EV route planning built in, even though it says it does. Exactly. This is the Nissan Araya. No, it's the Aria, but my dad calls it the Araya, which is really <laughs> funny. So sh shout out out of spec Dave for always getting the name of this car wrong. But I think we should call it the Araya for the rest of the video. Yeah, I like that. This is actually a base Aria, Jordan. Which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So we have it over here at the office, courtesy of Fort Collins Nissan for loaning it to us. We just shot a video for out of spec reviews comparing this to the Prologue, which they were surprisingly close. Yeah, I didn't expect that, but this thing's actually impressive for the price, especially when you get into lease deals, which that video is all about. Right, and the driving of the Aria is actually one of its strongest points. It is a fun to drive car. This one's the small battery all wheel drive. So it's like 65 kilowatt hours. You don't need more 200 miles around town. Yeah. The all wheel drive spicy. It's like under five seconds, zero to 60. And um, you know, it, it's a really interesting driving car. And I think on the test drive will sell people on it. Right. But there's some huge problems um, that Nissan should have had sorted by now because they were one of the first with the leaf to the EV game, dude. Right. It's crazy how this thing doesn't have a way to set your state of charge limit. It doesn't have a way to precondition the battery. Uh, there's no way to really get EV route planning, which is what this video is about. And my GameCube in 2003 had better looking software, so. <laughs> You're gonna do a whole software yeah. review, basically explaining to Nissan that things are really not going well. Because this is not a cheap car, Jordan. Right. This thing, if you were to spec it all the way up, is almost $60,000. That's insane. This one's low 40s. Still a lot of money. We thought it was gonna be maybe an infinity when they initially said they were making something, and I think it should have been, but now I feel like that would have made it even worse. Yeah, so the car launched late to the market, and then like they didn't get the software right. And here's one of the main problems. If you own an electric car, Jordan, and you wanna go from here in Fort Collins, Colorado, to Las Vegas, or you wanna go to Las Vegas, New Mexico, or you wanna go to Kansas City, or you wanna go to Bozeman, right for the occasional trip let's say you are a new ev owner you spend most of your time charging at home i'll show you the charge port over here you're gonna just be used to plugging in your car at your ac charger in your garage to 100 percent every day because there's no other choice in this car <laughs> and then you're gonna go on a trip and go oh where the heck are the stations you don't know because you charge at home every day you're not looking around right and the car doesn't help you at all whatsoever. And I think it's gonna set so many people up for a terrible EV ownership experience. What I first wanna do is go into your Tesla Model 3 over here. And what <laughs> we're gonna do is show everyone, it's not even like this car is more expensive, this car's cheaper. And I'm gonna show everyone what it's like if you go on your first EV road trip in a Tesla. By the way, we should mention both cars have access to the Tesla supercharging network. The Aria can use most stations all the V3s and everything. I wanna go from here to Las Vegas. Ready for this, Jordan? Boom. Calculating, thinking, done. One, two, three stops, we're there. Wow. Zero effort, and you don't even have to drive this car. You just hit that button right there and it drives you. We're gonna ignore that for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about route planning. How much was your car, 40 grand? Yeah. Okay, price is not even a thing here, right? This is like, they're the same money. This is more money. <laughs> okay, it's also a bigger car. So I'm not trying to make that comparison, but I'm just trying to show you why this is so important and why I think this is really gonna screw up a lot of people. I actually have the fans ripping on this car right now, Jordan, because we're setting it up for a charge test. Yeah, Ryan's gonna come charge it up. Should we've, be interesting. Yeah, we've never done a charging test of the standard Nissan Aria battery. You know, I think Nissan does officially recommend the 80% charge every day, which is really funny. Because how do you do that? If you own an Aria and know a way to set a charge limit, let us know. But you were just on the forums looking. Yeah, and no one could find a way. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is click the navigation screen, okay? This looks okay, Jordan. I mean, there's some smaller buttons down here. This is where it gets a little bit annoying is like the drag and everything isn't exactly what I like, but I can get over all this. The first thing that I'm noticing that isn't here is I don't see any charging stations on the map. Like, right. you know, whenever you zoom out in a car that has really good, yeah, let's turn down the, you're on low over there. Let's, 
Just keep a window cracked. God dang, <laughs> this thing's getting toasty. Um, you know, like there's a high power charger right here. If I zoom in, zoom in, there we go. It's showing eight, nine. What does that mean? Does that show me? No, it tells me a Mediterranean grill. There's Th this nine is points of interest right there. Okay, but the only one that an electric car owner cares about is where the heck can you charge the damn thing? And it's right here is the charger. Right, literally right there. Yep. Doesn't show you. So then I'm gonna click this little fill icon, ready? Boom, gas station search. <laughs> <laughs> this is an electric car. That is crazy. Okay, so we can go fill up at the Mavericks Adventure Stop right down the road, uh, or mobile. None of these have EV chargers on them. <laughs> How is that the hotkey on the home screen for, a, this is a brand new car out of the box. Couple other things before I get into the route planning, Jordan, that just, I have to point out that I know you'll put in your software review. If I come into this menu here and I go to settings, so scroll over, settings. I'm gonna go to EV settings. I'm gonna turn battery cooling assist on, which wasn't on from the factory. Right. When you factory reset it, that turns off. I don't know why. You would want <laughs> cooling while you're charging. So now we can actually get pretty good EV charging performance in the summertime. But let's say you wanna charge in the winter time. You've gotta come over here to home. I don't even know where to, oh, the settings icon right there, ready? Then we gotta go over to EV settings, different than that EV settings, and we gotta go to battery heater. It's a completely different place on a completely different screen. This also isn't preconditioning. All this says is like if the battery's an absolute frozen brick, it will just warm it up a little bit so that you can get some reasonable charge speed and reasonable to Nissan's like 20 or 30 kilowatts in the winter time yep. versus like 130 that it should do. And the only reason we know this is our good friend Lacey owns one of these. She bought it in the summertime. I put battery cooling assist on her car. She had no issues DC charging it, all good. Winter came around and her 30 minute charging sessions turned into three hour long charging sessions. Right, 130 and, kilowatts is not even that impressive, but when you can't even hit that, that's a problem. Right, she was getting like 30 kilowatts. She would, she would text me every single time she was at a DC charger. She was like, I just drove an hour. Why am I only getting 25 kilowatts? I'm like, you should have just bought a Model Y. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be that guy, but, um, or like an Equinox, yeah. right? Other cars that have battery preconditioning Mustang with Mach -E. route planning. Yeah. Mach-E, yeah. Not the best. <laughs> Still doesn't tell you when it's preconditioning. Yeah, it's, it, but it's better. It's right. better, it's better. Okay, so now let's do the Las Vegas test, okay? I'm going to click on this. I'm going to, uh, what? How do you just get to navigation? You gotta, this isn't oh, navigation. Oh, it's a separate app. That's a different app, excuse me, sorry. So I'm gonna go to Las Vegas and it does Google search and it should, oh, I missed a touch. There it goes. It does pop up pretty quick, so that's great. Setting as a new destination. Searching for optimal route with charging stations. Route will be, route will update once completed. So that's great, okay? Charging time is an estimation and may vary depending on conditions. Sounds great. Watch this, Jordan. Okay. You just gotta wait. I'm waiting. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be a minute. What else can I tell you about the Aria while we while we wait for this? I mean, this map, this map looks like the first digital map. <laughs> it looks the same as my 2012 Nissan Leaf. Yeah, it's true. The software like layout of everything is very similar. Of course, I still have my hotkey to look for gas stations. It's unable to do a route plan. Oh. We know there's plenty of charging on the way. We've done the route many times. We also know we have plenty of juice to get to a charger yep. because we have 32%. Now it says that it's 806 miles to our destination. The current battery level may not be enough to reach the destination, which is a problem because that's indicating that you might be able to. Right. Because you might not be able to. But I can guarantee you at 32% in a small battery all-wheel drive Aria, we're not making it 806 miles. It's You <laughs> definitely should not go, is what it should say, <laughs> unless you want to find a charging station. Would you like to find a charging station? Yes, of course. Okay, yes, here we go. Oh, thank goodness. So it did kind of look at the right distance away from us, right? 0.3 miles? Not really. Never mind. Sorry. Then you've got 10 miles away, 30 miles away, but it's showing like kind the of where we run out. are near our end of our range. Yeah. Yeah. But why do I have to do this manually, you know? So let's say we want to go to, you know, back to the results. Let's look at this charge point in North Glen. Okay. Would you like to replace or add? Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> obviously we're going to Vegas. So add that to the route. Calculating. Oh, no. Calculating. 
calculating. Okay, there we go. <laughs> well, show this the Pacific Ocean. Oh, Ocean. sorry, it's destination out of range. What? Why is that even the thing? Hold on, let's show. Destination might be out of range. Current driving range is 60 miles. Would you like to, oh man, can we not make it there? Yes, I'd like to search for a nearby charging station. Oh, okay, now we've got this one, EV Go in Westminster. Which is the same distance as the one we just tried. Literally the next time over. <laughs> <laughs> Add that to the route. Calculating. Where in the route do you think it placed it? Before or after the charge point? Oh my goodness, I have no idea what's gonna happen here. Boom, 808 miles. So it might be saying like, hey, you know, that destination's out of range for the final. But somehow I've just got myself into two chargers now. Yeah. And DC fast charge, no. Standard charge, yes. So the charger it recommended us to go to has no DC fast charging. Right, it's just a level two charger. Yeah. It didn't specify that anywhere in there. Mm. Let's give it one more shot, okay? Okay. Because there, <laughs> there potentially might be a setting to indicate you don't want to stop at a level two charger on your 800 mile road trip. Right. You might want to go to a fast charger. <laughs> and by the way, the level two charging speeds of this, Jordan, no. 7.2 kilowatts, only 32 amps. Yeah. So it's really like 6.6 .6 kilowatts on business voltage. All right, so let's um, eliminate these two things, okay? I'm not entirely sure how to do that. No, I want to remove waypoint. Maybe I go here, add to route, delete. There we go. Yes, I want to delete that one. Thank goodness. Go away. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Now let's delete the other one, all right? Oh, my gosh. Let's go here. Destination out of range. It's really not. Uh, oh, can't delete it that way. Got to click this. Delete. Yes, I'm already in fury. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, the reason I'm doing this is because I know you could figure this system out better than I could, but I am just... Uh, oh, I would have also already left the car by now. I would have right. been more infuriated. So destination out of range. Would you like to search for nearby charging station? This, this is what I wanted to show you. We can filter okay. for DC fast chargers. Oh, that's good. Okay, so I can go here, filter and show fast charging station. It says on, but we actually have to select that. Oh. Because now it's on. You wouldn't know that by glancing right. at that because everything <laughs> says on. Show available charging stations. Sure, 24 hours. Yeah, that's what I want. Available within 30 minutes. No, well, probably more than 30 minutes away. I don't yeah. even know what that would indicate. I don't know why that's there. Okay, now we'll go back and see what it suggests for the Vegas route. Why is this not the default? Now it's sending me to the Hyundai dealer that they block all their chargers, yeah. right? And it, they're 10 miles away. I know I can make it farther. It's that's sending me in the away. other direction oh, to our Maverick charger. That's our charger for range tests. Which is the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of BS is this? That is wild. Yeah, so let's just say, you know, let, let's just go, okay, I don't want to charge at a at a Hyundai dealer, right? We'll go to, you know, I've heard, you know, let's say charge point, whatever. This is two DC chargers. I don't even know where that would be. Let's just select Maverick just to, you know, see what it does because it's the wrong direction. Right. So normally a car would, you know, tell us what we might get there with, how much to charge. So the Tesla was like charge for 15 minutes, charge for 25 minutes, and it was three stops. We are still sitting here fiddling with this thing. Yeah. We could have been to Denver by now. <laughs> All right, so it says 1.07 p.m., 10 miles will get there. I don't see anywhere that it says what state of charge will arrive with. There's a recalculate button. Okay, that's Shouldn't good. Shouldn't it just do that automatically? <laughs> okay, so it doesn't say what state of charge we're going to get anywhere with. Don't see that in there. It could be buried somewhere. Some cars like have that. Yeah, some cars is hard to find. Right, but it should just always be state of charge on arrival, like boom, right there. Yeah. And it really should be over here as well. But I'm not seeing it, Jordan. No, me neither. This would be the only thing I can think, which is, you know, what you know, stop you're gonna do and your final destination, which really is just gonna be a coffin in this car. <laughs> you're never going to get anywhere. It's just going to be like trying to set the navigation in your Nissan Aria until death, and then you're buried. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the point we just want every automaker to watch. Like, it's so simple. If you're going to bring a new electric car to market, Jordan, the most bare minimum basic thing you could do is try to drive it more than the full charge range that you have in the vehicle. Right, but even if you wanted to just use part of your battery to go somewhere in town, knowing what you'd get there with, I think it's pretty crucial too. 
even if you never road trip this. It's just they've had so much time to figure this out. Yeah. And it's completely inexcusable that this is software shipping in a car for 2025. And it's not like this is an $8,000 car or a $10,000 car. The one we're sitting in, look at the sticker right there. What does it say on the other side? $45,000. And that's the base one. Yeah. When you get the Platinum Plus for almost 60 k you're not getting a better one of these. It's the same software. Same software. That's really bad. That's really bad. So anyway, this is why A, Nissan needs to get it together. Yep. And B, they're not the only ones. Yep. There's others out there that are this bad. So if we do a race to Vegas with this thing and then the route planner returns situation. You would just, you would go backwards, actually. <laughs> yeah, you would take it to LA. <laughs> say, actually, you got to go to Southern California because that's the only place you could drive an electric car. We wouldn't, this wouldn't compete. There's no way to route plan. There is no route planning. There is no route planning. I don't know why it says attempting to find chargers. I've put in multiple destinations. It's never found anything. Yeah, it's not like we tried to set this up to fail. It's just Right, and we're fully normal. connected to Nissan Connect. Like, everything's hooked up. Yep. Which you have to pay for. <laughs> Sorry. So, <laughs> so if, if anyone's watching, just do what Tesla does. And, and if, you know, you want to say, oh, Tesla only uses their superchargers. Well, you could just say this to only use superchargers, too. Yeah. It's, it's available to work. And the other option is if you don't want to copy Tesla because you think that's cheating because they have their own chargers, look at Mercedes. Yep. Look at Porsche. Great instant route planning every time. And uh, Google's offering it. Rivian has it. <laughs> yeah. GM stuff has it. Yikes. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.